Hey everybody, hope your files are going well. Um, I just wanted to jump in and kind of show you a little bit of a way to do some color correction. Um, what's really important with uh, bringing in new images into a plate is matching black levels. Uh, black levels are so important to get right um, in any level of visual effects, else it just does not feel integrated at all. Um, even if you have the lighting dead on and everything, black levels can be one of the biggest giveaways of a comp shot i can't stress it enough like how important black levels are um if you bring in if you're in dailies and your black levels are off i mean if they're just barely off they might just say hey double check your black levels but if they're off they're going to be like hey fix your black levels and they'll usually just kind of send you on your way so it's one of those things that if you're going in dailies first thing you want to do in a shot when you start bringing in images and making sure all the black levels on everything are correct it's also a quick it's a quick fix to get integration going really quick and it gives you kind of a quick win if you do it right. Um, so I'm gonna show you my workflow. Uh, I actually do this in Nuke as well. Um, so obviously this guy's way too dark. Um, I mean, this is just a render that I have without, uh, with only like one layer. I forgot the layers names or anything, but um, there's gonna be some information information missing in these areas. So don't worry about that. But he, so I have this shot and he's obviously this comes in way too dark it's obviously doesn't integrate well because the black levels look atrocious. So I have this guy and I also have a light version um, that we're going to kind of tweak. So what, what I would do is I actually use uh, the scopes. Um, so I'd go to windows right here and I'd go down to scopes. And then I'd bring in, there we go. So if it comes in like this, this is really hard to read and really hard to use. You really need to drag this like out as much as you can to really get some use out of it. Um, so right away, it's it can be intimidating to read, but it's really not that hard. As you can see, you can probably guess where Godzilla is, and he's like right in this area. So if I turn him off in the scope, you can kind of see exactly where he lives. And if I move him around, whoops. And if I move him around, you can kind of see that he, how the this is red left to right, just like the image. Um, so real quick, we can kind of tell like these are going to be your darks and these are going to be your brights. Um, so right away, we can see his darks are darker than anything else in the plate because his darks are right here. And if this was a floating image uh, and not clamped, these he'd definitely have negative values uh, slammed down here. So what we want to do is we want to bring this section right up in to match the blacks of our image. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add those simple levels. And I'm just going to go right over here to this black, the output black, and I'm just going to bring it right up to match the area roughly. We can maybe stick with this range if this is the darkest, but if we want, we can also, we can push it a little bit more. Um, this is just a good, this is just a good way to get them in the range that they need. You're still going to want to do all your color correction and everything else. This is just a great way to match your blacks. Um, and with the light, it's kind of similar. It's harder to read because his blacks aren't, um, really low down here like this. So if we add a, another one, another effect levels, uh, we're probably going to go on this side, right? So we're going to go to our output white. And, and we kind of see it reading in this area. And if we want, we can kind of just smush. We're going to add a little contrast, just a little bit, just kind of smush those blacks down into here. Um, and then what, I'm also, what also we can do, we don't, we don't want to mess with the blacks too much because it's going to get washed out. So for the lights, it's going to be a little trickier, things that are really bright. You might, you might have to just bring this down just a little bit to add a little contrast. Um, but it all depends on your shot as well. So you can see if we're cranking this um, input white, we're going way up too high and too bright. So we want to stick with these, the output white and black um, for now. I want to show you another way to color correct too. So with this, I would probably just tweak this just a tad, not much. Um, and then let's say we want to match um, both of these into this, they're further away. Like, so I did a little roto shape, really rough. So let's say now they're both way back in the back, in the distance, right? 
well, now we want to match the atmospheric uh, perspective. So we're going to want to match more maybe towards these blues uh, in, in, in the image versus uh, the foreground stuff. So what I would actually do then was we can still use our scopes for this. Um, and we can really do it a per channel uh, fix. So if we go to red and we do this, we can actually see, I'm going to go crazy with it. See how our red in this area right here is going way up high. We kind of want to match this section. And, and you got this is one of those things where you might have to go back and once we do it once, then we go to red, then we might have to go to green, then go back to red. So you kind of got, you might have to go back and forth a little bit. But now as you can see, we want our greens way down here. But in this image, the greens are above the reds. So we kind of want to flip these. So we're just going to kind of push this. Not too crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for this stuff to be in this area. I'm not looking for it to go like, you know, I'm not looking for this bottom because this is, I'm not looking for this bottom part. Hopefully if you don't have a smashed image, you won't have this issue. But this, these are the black blocks right here that are giving us these lines. But I'm looking for this, these little, this more fall off stuff here to be, to match the green. So I'm just going to kind of put those back right here. Then when you go to blue, and I'm going to tweak that just a little bit. And then you can still look at it, obviously with your eye. We can see as we're starting to hit in this area of the blues, we're really matching the blues in this background a lot more. If you want to, like, if you want to really push it to blend in, you can, or you can do it just slightly so he feels like he's more uh, further back in the atmo. Um, but this is, a, I, I find this way really easy just to kind of get my general colors correct colors right and get in the general range and then i would add more color corrections on top i'd probably do remember with with images you can do roto shapes and color correct within those just those roto shapes have a nice feather um, and maybe just do like a highlight on the arm or whatever so there's all sorts of stuff that you know we can do so for this guy i would do something similar i'd go to the red i always push it really far to see where everything's at Obviously, we don't want to push it way up here. That's nuclear Godzilla. So we want to, this is going to be slight. We just want to push this. And I might actually revisit the reds on this. So I'm going to go to green. Push those greens up a little bit more. Go to blue. Push those blues probably just to there. And I might go back to red. Just kind of see with my eye what I like, but I like the scopes because it kind of gets me in the area and then I can use my eye to see where I think it should fit. That's probably too green now. Something like that. And then if you want in, you can do like, um, just see there's a camera blur, camera lens blur, you know, for fun. You can really, that's too much. That's oh, oh wait, what am I doing? This is the wrong spot. I was like, this is not working the way I wanted to. Whoops, sorry about that. Let's see, I think like a two or better will be nice. So obviously this isn't perfect, but you can do something like this. Like we got we got there real quick with the color correction on this. So this is without it, this is with it. And now he that color correction sets him back and makes him actually gives him bigger more scale. Uh, also because here it feels like maybe well with with the roto it kind of feels like he's still really big. Here it can make it feel like he's even further away. Now you don't if you don't want him to blend in obviously perfectly with the background, like, like this is this blends in pretty well. You don't have to do that, but it like I was saying, it gets you in that ballpark. Uh, if you do want to match something with something else. So that's a great way that I like to do uh, some color correction in the beginning when I first get a shot. Um, and I match black levels that way. And I usually if I have to blend something or try to get something similar. Um, that's how I do it with histogram or the scopes. And if you are moving on to nuke, they also have scopes and nuke. 
And like I said, I have on, on mine, I have a little float window right here of, of my scopes that I use all the time. And it's intimidating. It can be kind of weird. Um, but if you just play with it and keep using it and have, even if you don't use it, but just have it up all the time and kind of glance at it while you're doing color corrections, you can kind of learn and see how it's reading the image and see where the colors lie. Uh, and I think it will really help a lot. And we really need to make sure on all of our images, every element we bring in, we want to make sure our black levels are correct. That's just super, super important. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. And if you guys have any questions about it, uh, feel free to message me as always. And I hope your projects are going well.